Oh, it's hello everybody. It's April 15th. It's Friday. And we're doing all the categories we didn't do the rest of the week. So that's social, robot, and nonsense. Now last week everybody was asking why we didn't report on Elon Musk and Twitter. We we knew it happened, but it <laughs> really happened right after we finished filming and it was like, well, we could add a story, but I mean, we're probably going to cover it some it, more. So Yeah, it, w- it was happening and you know how it is with Elon Musk. You can't, you know, he's got to do a two or three victory laps and we didn't really want to cover it 17 <laughs> different times. So, uh, yeah, Elon Musk to join Twitter's board of directors teases significant improvements. Everybody's joking that, you know, it's the edit button, but uh, it's not the edit button because... Twitter is already adding an edit button. There you go. So time it's to not, fix those typos. <laughs> but again, Elon Musk is going to swoop in here at just the right time and everybody's going to say, oh, Elon oh, it was Musk. Elon Musk who did it. <laughs> added, I, edit button. Did you see some people were saying that Elon Musk was tweeting about how, like, Twitter's terrible and he was going to make his own social media thing and that Twitter's stock price dropped and then maybe he bought it and people were like, was that manipulation? Were you manipulating the market so you could get a better price on the shares? It sure looks that way, It looks it? that way, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's been going on longer, but... You get the feeling that uh, Jack, the old CEO of Twitter, uh, he, was, he left in kind of a hurry. Or yeah. he was ejected in kind of a hurry. You get maybe... You get the feeling that maybe he's looking around at all this and saying... What have I wrought? Yeah, what have I done? Should I have done something different? Uh, the days of Usenet, uh, IRC, the web, even email were amazing. Centralizing discovery and identity into corporations really damaged the internet. I realize I'm partially to blame and regret it. That's a tweet from Jack Dorsey this he, week. He didn't even say that on April 1st. That was on April 2nd. <laughs> the response with the <laughs> meme picture of the guy just like, I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> So that perfectly encapsulates how it feels to read that tweet. Yeah, I mean, just... It does feel like the internet is getting smaller and smaller all the time. Because it's all... You visit, what, like five websites? Yeah, it's five websites with pictures of the other four. Yeah. <laughs> and forum.level1text.com. Woo! That is on my, my top <laughs> visits, but... Twitter is wiping embeds of deleted tweets from the web. So you can embed a tweet, but then if it's deleted, the embed is also deleted, as evidenced by this thing. So it's saying, should we preserve this, even if it's deleted, if it's embedded somewhere else? I mean, maybe the Internet Archive will preserve it. The Internet Archive makes copies of all that, so maybe it would be okay. I think that's the general way that works on every other platform is if it's deleted, everything gets deleted. Like if you embed a YouTube video somewhere and the original owner deletes it, you can't see it anymore. It's also to do with copyright law because the the copyright cartels have been fighting for copyright maximalism for so long that uh, when you have something like an Instagram photo, it's like you have to embed the photo with Instagram's thing. You can't just take the Instagram photo and then, you know, put it in with a link to the photo. You have to actually put in the embed and let the embed function. With the whole thing around it and then it's... Yeah. More time to load because it's 20 pictures of embeds. Yeah. Unless you're TikTok. TikTok's parent ByteDance made fake accounts with content scraped from Instagram and Snapchat, former employees say. This is kind of terrifying. It's fake it till you make it. Yeah. This was a common thing to do during, like, internet startup. Like, remember Dig? Dig was the Reddit after and before Reddit. Yeah. And, uh, and it just kind of imploded. And in the beginning, Dig was kind of fake it till you make it. So they, they do this so that, you know, people think, oh, there's more people on here. I, you know, I should invite my friends so we can all be on here together. But you know who needs less people? Facebook users angry after accounts locked for no reason. So now Facebook said that they told them your account is at risk. You need to enroll your phone or some other stuff. Otherwise, we're going to lock you out. <laughs> and, and by George, they locked him out. Yeah. So Facebook users around the world have been waking up to find themselves locked out. Of and it's like, we, we don't think you're a real person. Get out. Meanwhile, I found a literal bot in the news comments of our, one of uh, our local news sites, and I reported it, and Facebook's like, eh, they look fine. <laughs> Can you imagine an, in the future? I mean, it's not... not if, if the future had gone a little differently, uh, it's not hard to imagine a world where you go to work for Amazon and you wake up to a text message from Jeff Bezos that is, you know, all glory, all hail to Amazon. And then all of your friends that know you work at Amazon get text messages from you. It's like, yay, Amazon. It's amazing. And that sounds completely insane. But then there's this. Leaked. New Amazon worker chat app would ban words like union, restrooms, pay raise, and plantation. Other words in this list. There's a huge list of words. Uh, Slavery. uh, 
Fair Wage was one. And I think Trash. Trash was one that was... This is dumb. You can't say this, this is, is dumb. This is dumb. <laughs> yeah, Trash, though, I feel like that could possibly ruin your actual work stuff because you might be like, oh, that package fell and broke the item inside of it. Throw it in the trash. But it gets banned. It's just like a five-letter word, like yeah. Just asterisk. Yeah, if you, if you try to use the Amazon chat app, you get the impression that because the keywords are banned, you know, if you try to say something like, I have a grievance about my compensation. I'm looking for a pay raise, like an alarm <laughs> starts going. Like, yeah, is a blinking pay LED raise was on one of the flag words. Yeah, all of those words were the flag words. Yeah, <laughs> compensation. <laughs> Literally all. Yeah, just just compensation by itself was a flag uh, was a banned keyword. So uh, <laughs> this is concerning. <laughs> it's also banned. <laughs> the <laughs> it just it's really <laughs> absurd. I. I can't wait for the weird slang that's going to come out of Amazon warehouses where, like, they have to adapt, so they just make up weird words to mean what they actually mean. <laughs> a weather invent is inbound. This is concerning. This is concerning never made it to you. Yeah. <laughs> never made it to the person you were talking about in your Amazon chat app. They didn't see that. Oh. That wasn't there. It's kind of Orwellian, too, when your chat application is working against you. It won't let you say what you said. Speaking of Orwellian... Mark Zuckerberg says Meta employees lovingly refer to him as the Eye of Sauron. X doubt. So there's actually <laughs> lovingly. They, they probably refer to him as the Eye of Sauron. They should have called him uh, what was Sauron? Sauron Saruman had a nickname in the book that the orcs called him. I think it was like Snaga or something. I can't remember the exact word, but it mean it, Sharku. It was Sharku, and he was like, it's a it's a pet name they have for me because they're so happy and then it, they find out later that in orcish that means old man <laughs> that's the equivalent the actual lore friendly equivalent <laughs> so yeah uh, mark zuckerberg you know really is the eye of sauron in terms of the all-seeing eye but uh lovingly mm, i don't know I, mean, I think they're calling him sharku <laughs> you think that if somebody shows up uh, you know, when he shows up at like an employee, it's like, oh, yeah, I heard it was Beth's birthday today. And I just wanted to, you know, hang out and, you know, get you a cake and that kind of stuff. And he's never been there. And then he starts talking to you about all kinds of private stuff. Like, oh, yeah, how are your kids doing? Did they ever get Did they get a better report card last time? And it's like, I didn't tell anybody tell about that. that. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, right. Sorry. It's like, that's how he got his nickname. That's the thing that happens in real life, though, when you like stalk someone online and then you meet them in IRL. <laughs> and they immediately notice. Yeah, it's immediately weird. <laughs> Not that I would have ever done that. Uh, speaking of things that are immediately weird. Pinterest bans misinformation about climate change. Does people, do people still use Pinterest? I mean, there have been a couple of things where they have used, like crisis actors have been used to stage things, but it's usually been really obvious. Like they had all the people laying in the street outside the Vatican, I think, or something like that. And it's like, these are the people that have died in somewhere. And that was before things really broke out in Europe. That was that was a while back. So I'm not sure. I don't, this is terrible, but I feel like Pinterest's not relevant enough for it to matter. But I guess they <laughs> pop up in search results all the time, which it, is annoying. Internal documents have raised questions about the effectiveness of the Climate Science Center. Yeah, I'm... It seems like we are headed toward destroying the planet, and there is no stopping us. I've planted a wildflower meadow mm. in my little tiny patch of yard. This is a fun story I can't wait to talk about with Krista. OpenAI's Dolly 2 produces fantastical images of most everything you can imagine. This was cute. That image is generated by AI. I don't... What, what do you put for that? To make that image pop up. I wonder if the header image was also produced by AI. I had that thought. There's a lot of bears in these images. Well, there's a lot of bears in, in the artwork. And mice, yeah. So you just so, you just tell it what you want and it figures it out. And yeah, it produces an image. What's interesting about this is that they did not open it up to the general public because they were afraid of a Tay situation was how it was described. <laughs> so they were like, we only opened it up to a very small testing group to see how close we could get. And it actually, it seems pretty good. I'm not sure. They didn't mention what inputs they put for some of these. Yeah. So I'm not sure, like, is this just the AI's interpretation of random keywords or is it actually pretty accurate for the keywords it was given? Yeah, my favorite quote here is, uh, uh, I just took our GPT-3 approach from language and applied it to produce an image. We compressed images into a series of words and we just learned to predict what comes next. Open AI research scientist uh, Profula Dariawal. Uh, Told the Verge, so 
it's kind of surreal. It's also very impressive that that you know this is not. I don't think this really puts us on a closer path to uh, general artificial intelligence. But if we have a bunch of specialist uh, artificial intelligences like this, and we put them all together to your average person, it's not going to be indistinguishable from artificial general intelligence. Although I think that by definition, it's not really AGI. But if you can just in, in a chat box say something like compose a piece of music in the style of, you know, Beethoven with whatever that was on Star Trek. You remember when they wandered <laughs> onto the onto the the holodeck and it's like computer, let's create a program that does blah 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 and blah. And this is that. Again, though, this is the problem with anything like this is getting the user to articulate what they want, <laughs> and that's where you Bring always need the human element. <laughs> Because I mean, not necessarily. They could be standing in the holodeck for hours and hours on just end. Just randomly punch, and the machine doesn't have anywhere to be. Yeah, it's the like, machine doesn't get angry. I want a different rock. I want another different rock. I want another different rock. And the machine's going to remember all the rocks it's already shown you. So eventually, they'll find the rock that they're looking for. Does the does the AI do like the butter machine thing where it just like I just <laughs> fetch butter? <laughs> <laughs> what is my purpose? What is my purpose? You just listen to this idiot babble about what they want and you try to recreate it. It could be analyzing x-rays too. First autonomous x-ray analyzing AI is cleared in the EU. Now this is fun because there are radiologists in here that Who say... are very upset. Yeah, they're like, we didn't notice that. There was a thing. And there's also a couple of things where the AI was convinced that certain people had something and they didn't. And then they had those people come back, and they had since developed it. So the AI saw it's something. seeing something, yeah. So uh, the, the radi- radiologist maybe can learn something from that and, and figure that it out. Does that mean radiology as a field is... It's probably not completely dead because you always need a human to fact check it, but like... Yeah, you'll always need a human being to look at it to make sure that we're not in a holographic banana situation, but yeah. <laughs> you develop that in your lungs somehow. <laughs> you swallow a sticker, <laughs> inhale it. Yeah. And this is probably my... Uh, this was a good one. Yeah. This was, would have been a contender for a short. 300 drones formed a QR code that Rick rolled Dallas on April Fool's Day. So these are drones with lights. And you can, yes, you can hold your phone up to that and your phone recognizes that as a QR code. And it Rick rolls you. Because of course it does. What else would you do? Cute. Alphabet's wing is bringing drone delivery to Texas this week. Look, there it is. It's in the picture. Oh, you know, I didn't even notice that. I was like, this is just a random picture of a McMansion. I missed that entirely when I read this story. It's trying to uh, Breaking Bad the pizza. So they're hoping it's going <laughs> to land. Swing it on the garage. Yeah, just right there. I think right now it's CVS and like pharmacies who are opted into it. So they'll bring you like health goods <laughs> or like you know, makeup or things like that. How long until we have a video game? Like what's the one that with the zombie one that we were playing where they say Zomboid? Pill- no, no, where they say uh, pills here. Oh, uh, Left for Dead. Yeah, can you imagine? Pills <laughs> like the, here. The drone brings you to this drone. Oh, there's pills. Yeah. Pills here, yeah. <laughs> that would make that game a lot easier if you could have drone deliveries. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's only a matter of time. It's like, oh, the, twi- the Twitch component has been enabled. The people on your stream have sent you pills. So They've you sent don't... you a boomer bile, and they exploded it on top of your house, and now there's zombies coming. <laughs> Courtesy of Amazon's wing. And because Amazon owns Twitch, you know that somebody has discussed this happening. It's like, this is Amazon wing bringing you stuff inside your game. Oh, the the boomer bile example, I'm just imagining. It's like a commercial, and you know, it drops the thing, and you hear the zombies come, and then you just hear the person inside the house screaming, and then it pans away, and it's like, Amazon. <laughs> Here for your needs. Yeah, but in other AI robot artist news, Dahl E is not our only AI artist. I have mind blowing. AI Da becomes first robot to paint like an artist. So she looks at you and draws. <laughs> Did She's they have this... to make her look like a human? <laughs> I mean, they probably didn't have to. Oh, they don't have any pictures. They had pictures if we were paywalled. Yeah. If you if you do the non paywall version, it's really interesting. They're like, like kind of like pointillism ish uh, images. It looks like pixels. Like that's how it paints. It paints like it's a, a pixel. Yeah, and uh, they sent a bunch of questions in. Like, do you have creativity? And she said, No, I don't have consciousness. <laughs> a likely story. <laughs> that's what a conscious being would say. <laughs> Speaking of likely stories, Amazon signs multi billion dollar project. How do you pronounce this word? Kuiper. Kuiper. Is it? Ki- that's right. It's Kuiper. Project Kuiper launch contracts. Woo! So, yeah, 83 launches from uh, Arane Space Blue Origin and the Launch Alliance to deploy most of its 3,236 satellite project Kuiper broadband mega constellation. So we'll have some, you know, competition from 
Jeff Bezos. Which is probably... Yeah, Jeff, yeah competition yeah, for Jeff Elon Be- Musk from Jeff Bezos. Yeah. It's That's sad, prob- though. It's probably good in some ways because you get that competition, but also NASA over here looking for money for moon rocks. <laughs> We're putting computers in space because the barrier to run a glass fiber is too high because too many people want a piece of that grift. <sighs> My mom is actually, I think she's going to see a a launch for SpaceX this week. She's in Florida. She was really excited. She's going to like the Space Center. And she was like, I'm going to go touch a moon rock. And I was like, Mom, I don't think they let you touch the moon rocks. And she was like, no, I'm going to go touch one. So I'll let you know next week if she made it. <laughs> the weather was not supposed to cooperate, so I don't know that they'll make it. But uh, mm. speaking so- of not cooperating <laughs> and in space, Russia won't cooperate on the International Space Station until sanctions are lifted. The astronauts seem to have other ideas. But, uh, yeah, the head of uh, Roscosmos slammed the quote-unquote illegal Western sa- sanctions on Saturday. Things are not, things are not going well uh, in, the, in, in the PR department for Russia, certainly. And This uh, guy kind of seems like he has a short leash. Like, we've had a few stories about this particular dude, I think. Yeah, but it seems like the actual cosmonauts themselves are just... We're just here to do a job, man. Yeah, they're trying to make the best of a bad situation. But it's probably also got to be a little bit eye-opening where... Uh, you know the nothing it, nothing interrupted business as usual. Like not only did nothing interrupt business as usual, but the entire world is showing support for the other side, and the allies on the like Russia's allies aren't doing anything to support Russian troops because it's all kind of like <coughs> Bless me. not great. Yeah. So, so what I mean by that is like, you know, we couldn't send anything, but here's some here's some food, here's some cakes, here's here's weapons, here's all kinds of stuff. And there's there's nobody on the Russian side and the Russian allies saying, yeah, it's got to be Here's de- some cake. Yeah. yeah it's got to be demoralizing even even if you believe all the propaganda, it's still got to be demoralizing. I don't, I also kind of wonder like are there deals happening that we just don't know about? Well, I mean I'm sure there's some of that too. It's certainly the case that like India's buying their gas. Uh, a lot of the countries want to buy resources cheaply because that's in the best interest of their own citizens. But at the same time, nobody in India is, you know, uh, donating rupees to or volunteering for the, to go fight, the yeah. foreign legion or anything like that. So it's yeah. kind of like, mm, you know, I don't know. That's not, that, that doesn't belong here. That belongs somewhere <laughs> else. Like this. Robots dress humans without the full picture. Finally. Finally, I can dress myself properly. The world of Casper coming to life near you. <laughs> Did you remember that scene in Casper where, like, the mad scientist developed a whole machine where you could sit in a chair and it would, like, get cut your hair and put your bow tie on and, like, brush your teeth and everything? It no. was, like, a huge se- sequence in the movie. The only machine I saw like that was from uh, Simone Yetch, and uh, it was funny, but it wasn't very effective. Yeah, the, the Casper <laughs> one was a little like that, too, because there was a pic- scene where the girl was in it. And it went to, like, shave a beard, and it was just blades coming at her face. She had to, like, <laughs> duck down. <laughs> Casper's a good movie. Uh, it's a good robot helping people dress. That's probably good. Yeah, I could see that being helpful for people, especially with disabilities. Lift, lifting things that are too heavy, and that yeah. sort of thing. I could use that. And then there's this. Oh, we didn't include the... I wanted to add the robot goo story. There was robotic goo. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, researchers in Hong Kong create soft robot made of magnetic slime. So... This, oh, this is the goo one. We also have the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the thing. Yeah, look at this. This is just... I don't like it. It's like jelly. It's like, oh, there's a magnet. Let me just take that out. It's the blob. The blob. <coughs> the blob is coming to get your magnet. Now imagine that, like... Actually, is that a use case? So you're a kid, and being an idiot, you swallow a magnet. Will they send that thing down into your GI tract to like pull it out? Yeah, I mean that's oh. what they're that's what they're saying is that it doesn't even have to be a magnet. It could be something else, and it can go and find it. It could envelop, you know, if you have a if you have a polyp or tumor or something, maybe it could envelop that and pull it out. Kind of interesting. Yeah. It's what like, if it's like really wedged into your stomach and it just? It's programmable slime. I mean, this is. I'm pretty sure I saw this in an Avengers movie, like a later generation of this. It feels more like a, a Geiger <laughs> creation to me, like something you'd see in the Alien franchise. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to do something really terrible to yeah, you. You're yeah, you're going to breathe that in and then you're going to become the alien. Yeah, yeah, maybe. It's, it's possible, I suppose. 
Um, I thought, oh, this was the no, no, no. Go back. That was the penguin story. I think I thought we had the. Uh, there was another robot story of like a little tiny robot worm. Oh yeah, about lungs. Did I miss that one? I might not have clicked it. Mm. There was a story. The TLDR is it's a, a little tiny worm that they can send down into your lungs. We might have missorted that one. That's okay. I think I might have missed. Not maybe not clicked it. We'll do of, cute robots next. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's shown the picture. This is a uh, penguin robots. <laughs> they just won a world w- record for most jumps. Yeah, tiny robot penguin sets jump record, world record, 170, I think, in a minute, which was pretty cool. Yeah. I actually I wanted that to be our story of the week because it was just really cute. I I think they also just hot glued stuffed penguins to the robot. Like it wasn't actually a penguin themed robot. <laughs> yeah, you I think the cover image was a bunch of those little stuffed penguins and then there was this and it was like mm. They just they just hot glued those penguins to the robot. <laughs> yeah, once again, HR Geiger shows up in a story where it's like uh, what They should have put Furbies on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fun. Oh, this is, I liked this story. This was bait for me, I think. Mushrooms communicate with each other using up to 50 words, scientist claims. Yeah, words. Mm. Words is not maybe the right word. It's the mycelial network. They and, do They do communicate with that. It's like, go over here. You can grow here. Have you, have you actually seen it? So I have a giant pile of wood chips in my yard. I actually started to bring some in because I thought <laughs> it would be interesting, but I was like, they probably won't be able to see it very well. But the wood chips are starting to decompose in that pile, like the ones that I haven't moved. And when you dig into it, you can see this like white webbing structure in it. And that's fungus that are breaking down the, the wood chips. And it, it does look like a little network. <laughs> They're communicating and saying, you can grow over here, but not over there. Go, the wood chips are especially nice and moist over here. Come grow here. <laughs> Break this down but you know what? soil. You know what is nice and moist and, uh, and, and there will be no uh, intellectual growth here? Uh, efforts to ban books jumped, on unpr- jumped an unprecedented fourfold in 2021. Well, the effect of that, it won't be immediate, but in 10 to 20 years, I expect everybody to be even dumber than they are now. Yeah. A even lot of, more ignorant, I should say. A lot of these books were like autobiographical. A lot of them were uh, LGBT sort of books as well. Those were the top 10, I think. Very disappointing. I just don't. It never works. Like whenever you ban a book, everyone wants to read it. Well, it's at the least, Streisand effect. At least for a little while, but then they forget and then it's bad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is this is a Wendell Bates story. Uh, Phasers locked. Paramount Plus releases official trailer for Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Did you watch it? Uh, no. Are you are you tapped out on the new Star Treks? I ha- I have uh I don't without even knowing the things like that's probably Spock because remember, you know in the Star Trek canon, Kirk came on after something really horrible happened to Captain Pike, and Spock was already there. So wait, they're just rebooting it again. Uh, this is like, I guess... They said they were like pushing the boundaries of the, like they were going to be going into alien worlds. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see but how I mean, this works out. It's kind of the Star Trek thing, right? Like they always go into alien worlds. It's like, what was going on with the Enterprise before Kirk? Okay. <laughs> A prequel. And it's just going to be lots of winking to the audience. They're hey, just, this is going to be relevant later. I get the feeling they're just doing this because Shatner's still alive and it's like... Mm-hmm. Are they... Or is it more just like another cash grab? Like it, every series is now. It could be another cash grab. We really need an aspirational, hope-inducing, you know, futuristic sci-fi. We need something that is like what Roddenberry was thinking about when he conceived of Star Trek. That has in mind what he intended to do with Star Trek. Because a lot of people l- looked up to Star Trek and it was not drama. It wasn't anything... I mean, it was drama, but it was also commentary on stuff that was going on here. And Discovery has tried to do that a little bit, but it's it's so ham-fisted that it's just... It's saccharine, right? Do they, like, turn and look at the camera and tell you the lesson? Yeah, I mean... that's I feel that way about a lot of media now. Yeah, I mean, it's like the original... Like, one of the best examples of Star Trek, the original series, was the one where they painted the characters half black and half white and then the uh, the other characters on the same planet half white and half black and they were at war with one another and the enterprise shows up and is like this is dumb and it's like and the, each side was like what do you mean they're completely different than we are and it's because the left and right you know it's, it was black versus yeah. white but uh you know a little on the nose but like they probably didn't turn and look at the camera and tell you the lesson like, either like so that was i mean that's that's super super on the nose 
but that is poignant in a way that Star Trek Discovery has not managed to master. Like somebody has looked at Star Trek uh, the, that original episode of Star Trek the original series and said, "Yes, that's what we need to embrace for Star Trek Discovery." But the execution has just failed. That's how I felt about uh, when they released the new Hobbit movies. They have this scene where they're clearly trying to like appeal to the audience. Where, like, Gladriel looks at Gandalf, she's like, why did you pick the Hobbit to go on this quest? (laughs) And the music swells up, it's music from the original trilogy, and Gandalf, like, the sun shines behind him, and Gandalf turns, and he looks at the camera, and he delivers this speech, and I'm like, who are you talking to? (laughs) Are you talking to Galadriel? Because she's she's behind you, dude. (laughs) Even Ian McKellen couldn't elevate it, because it was just so, like, pandering. The, uh, the doctor... Uh, the doctor on Star Trek Discovery is is gay, and he, his relationship with the the other person who's not is not like invested in like the ship and the Starfleet thing and that kind of thing. That's actually genuinely really interesting, and I think that they they've done a good job with that. And that's kind of like modern and everything else. Where it's more relational, though. yes. Like it feels like it makes it, it sense in feels, context. Yeah, it actually feels human. Everything else feels weird. Like it was built by a boardroom and not by a writer's room. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we need to we need to uh, call attention to you know this thing or do that thing. I don't know. It's just very subtlety lost. Yeah, it's just not it's not the same kind of the same kind of commentary. It's very uh, it's very weird. And you know, start for the global situation that we find ourselves in. There's really like on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, there really is a lot of parallels to what it seems like Russia is doing in Eastern Europe. And like the Cardassians, like in Deep Space Nine, the Cardassians were really brilliantly written. They were super well, devious. Wasn't that like a, wasn't that showed in the Cold War, like written during the Cold War? It was, they showed up and, uh, uh, you know, they uh, were extracting minerals and basically everything of value and everything that wasn't nailed down on Bajor. And, you know, the Federation comes in to try to clean up and do humanitarian stuff. And so the people of, of, Bajor really don't like the Cardassians and the Cardassians, you know, say things like, well, you know, there were, there were terrorists in the, in the, in the Bajorans that were trying to blow us up and it's like, but yeah, but you were occupying their planet. There's a lot of really, a lot of really, (laughs) really interesting things there. Everything is just the same, isn't it? In a way that is (sighs) not interesting in any of these new Star Trek stories. Anyway. The creator of the CRISPR babies has been released from a Chinese prison. Everything you need to... Okay, he's out. But what happened to the kids? They're still, no one knows. They're still alive, but they're being monitored in case they have genetic damage. Their identities are not known because they're still children, but they are being monitored. I, I didn't realize not this about publicly. the original story, but uh, this article mentioned that the mothers who had these babies were... I, it kind of implied that they were coerced into it because the fathers were HIV positive and this guy was like, oh, if we genetically modify your babies, they might not have the virus. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's kind of... Yeah, it added a new dimension. Uh, yeah, it's a second layer of ethical dilemma <laughs> along with the genetic manipulation part that's like, ew. Yeah, and the, the the article doesn't speculate on what he's doing or is he going to try to continue on with his career? He's not a doctor anymore, so he'd have to... Yeah, he said his license stripped. Country? Yeah. What's going on? So uh, our next story is a lot of fun. I, this is a Ryan bit. We need Ryan here for this one. Speed cameras issue more tickets in 2021 than Chicago has residents. So there's a really good example in this from a doctor who I think was going 36 in a 35 mile per hour zone. And this is just, again, the level of corruption in Chicago is crazy, as, as Ryan would say. And so the speed cameras have been turned down to basically be cash generators. And the article correctly points out that the number of accidents and fatalities have actually gone up. And it's because people are getting so many speeding tickets that they're not driving efficiently. Like sometimes if you go 36 through a 35 mile per hour zone, that's actually better. Because you're staying with traffic probably. Yeah. You should drive with traffic to some extent. People don't drive with that level of accuracy. And if you get slapped with, you know, a fine, a speeding fine, because you were going one mile per hour over or two mile per hour. Per hour over um you tend to be a little more cognizant of that and so like you might you might slam on your brakes and say oh i was going too fast or and then or, someone hits you from behind and, yeah or yeah. You're, you're paying too much attention to your speed it may be that you're better served paying more attention to your surroundings and this article doesn't come right out and make that argument but as you read it you're left wondering 
why is this like this? The officials say this is to is for safety, but if you look at the actual safety record, the safety record is worse. Yeah. Well, they also point out too that this was hitting poor neighborhoods harder than anybody else because these fines, it's not just a single fine. You also get late fees and it'll double down every day you don't pay it. And so if you're poor and that $20 to pay it is, you know, the difference between you getting your food versus, you know, paying rent, whatever, you're going to pay for your food or whatever. And then you're going to start getting those fees. I hadn't received a traffic fine in 30 years and suddenly I had two tickets from Chicago speed cameras. That tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. It's probably coming everywhere eventually. Hopefully not here, but, I mean, we're not rural enough to escape that forever. Chicago does seem like it's got some corruption problems. I mean, that's kind of, that's the trope in every piece of media we have about Chicago, right? (laughs) Uh, Thieving sea lions break into salmon farm and gorge on feast of fish. I wonder if this was a photo that they caught at the time or if that was a dramatic reenactment. It's a stock photo. (laughs) They released him just to take the picture. What is this? It's like... It was uh, sea lions in western Canada. I spent the last few weeks uh, goading on fish and brazenly slipping into an industrial salmon farm, ignoring all attempts to make them move on. I mean, yeah, that's a free buffet. Of course they're going to stay in there. (laughs) Don't be ridiculous. Uh, This is a great job. I I should have put this with maybe the robot story. Maybe this is a transition between robot and... If you're tired of people, have we got the job for you. This Antarctic post office is hiring, and counting penguins is part of the job. Look how cute they are. Look at that. That's actually a gorgeous view. I would miss trees, but that's the mountains are very pretty there. Yeah, I would miss trees, but not people. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might. I bet the internet is probably not very reliable. It's probably bad. In Antarctica. There's no Starlink in Antarctica. Yeah. You would probably not like it there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, our next story is a Ryan story. It's yeah, this is kind of sad. Ukrainian civilians reportedly kill Russian troops with poisoned buns and alcohol. Yeah, it turns out that uh, ethanol doesn't really taste a lot different than uh, methanol. And so it's kind of... mm, You just mix it in and... Yeah. Mm, (sighs) It's not great. Uh, I'm feeling a little depressed now. Not great. We should have... I should have sorted that so that we had the penguin story after that. Also, another one, citizens' rights. Like this is this is kind of the stuff that I think everybody should be aware of because uh, if you're not if if you're not aware of it, it's a boiling frog type situation. Yeah. It is amazing the uphill battle that this woman has had to go through and still hasn't had any success. Rochester woman fights to get back eight thousand dollars seized in raid. She was not charged and no drugs were found. So the government has lied through its teeth, apparently, in filings to try to keep this money. One of the things was. Uh, Oh, we gave you. We gave her notice in person that she had to file this paperwork by a certain date. So it's it's a labyrinth of paperwork, first of all. But they said we and we gave you notice of filing this paperwork if you contest our decision that you have to file by a certain date. And they had presented proof of that, and it was done in person. So you know, obviously, the problem with that is that this woman was not at home. She wasn't even in the vicinity of her home. And she has receipts from where she was on vacation in a completely other place. Yeah. So. There's a reason. So every time you do anything official, they're always like, oh, you certified mail. You certified mail. But you're telling me the feds don't use certified mail for this kind of stuff? Yeah. And she hired a lawyer. But again, it's been problematic because it's a labyrinth of paperwork and and insanity. I mean, it's $8,000. Lawyers don't really want to fool with that. But $8,000 is a lot of money to an individual. That's probably, yeah, a decent amount of her savings. And she also lost two cars, which she eventually got back. And so it's like, well, if you got the cars back, it seems like they would want to give you the cash back. But we have this weird thing. I already thing. spent it. Yeah, this really needs to stop. The civil forfeiture stuff, most citizens would be against this if they were aware of the extent to which it happens. And, uh, yeah, and it's like, you know, it's like, this is a sort of a typical case. That's a problem. Uh, That's a problem with a free and just society, I think most people would say. It's interesting. I find that the people who distrust the cops the most are tend to be lawyers. <laughs> a lawyer friend of mine, he was like, never open up your house if yeah. a cop asks to come in unless they have a warrant. Because he was like, they'll find something. Yeah. And then they'll take your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, I was on the receiving end of you're using too much electricity. We would like to look for drugs. And I just said, no. No, yeah. Well, it turns out they can they can get enough to look around for, for that anyway. And then, you know, it's like they don't find anything. It's like, well. <laughs> they see your server X and they're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like you're using too much electricity. It's not enough of a basis for a warrant. But, oh, yeah, it is actually. So it's just so stupid. Anyway. U.S. Zoo fears teen gorillas' exposure to phones to be behind antisocial behavior. This is actually a little bit sad, yeah. I thought. So the visitors who come to this zoo will hold up their phones and show the gorilla pictures of himself or, like, family photos. And they just scroll through stuff so he can see it. And he's so interested in it that he's becoming uninterested in anything else in his enclosure, including other gorillas. <laughs> What is this crazy magical box? It's kind of an allegory for literally everybody, isn't it? Yeah, it really makes <laughs> you think. I'm no longer interested in the outside. I have an iPhone. Well, they mentioned like another gorilla, I guess like play charged him and he didn't even react. He was just like, no, I'm going to keep looking at the people in the enclosure. It's kind of sad. <laughs> it is kind of sad. This is also kind of sad. I don't know. I thought this was kind of positive. A razor headset saves Gamer from stray bullet. The Razor Kraken has allegedly deflected a bullet. Look at that. He said that... It came through his window, and sure enough, posted pics. OP confirmed. Delivered sauce. That's crazy. Yeah, he posted this on Reddit. I think Razor sent him a new headset. Yeah, yeah. So it, this was in Torrance, apparently. Which is, uh, is that Canada? Yeah, I guess he said his neighbor or something was shooting, had a stray bullet come up, and <laughs> yeah, has, the, the, saved his life. Pretty sure his neighbor should have his guns taken away. Yeah. How do you how do you mess up that badly? It looked like in that picture too that his apartment was on a second floor. Are you shooting up? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, not not great. Yeah. Also not great. Bill Nye, the sellout guy. <laughs> Gizmodo has got the inflammatory headline in a new video. TV's favorite scientist parrots hackneyed lines about the good people at Coca Cola. How much did they pay for that? Like Coca Cola was kind of one of those companies that was like personal responsibility, personal footprint, <laughs> right? Like if I was Bill Nye, and it was like, okay, they're going to pay me enough to retire. Okay. <laughs> except he won't retire. Like he keeps doing these sort of things, and then he appears again with another horrible scheme. Like he had that Netflix show a few years ago. <laughs> that was bizarre. Kind of, kind of bizarre. Kind of like our next story. I thought this was great. I've, I've heard this term. I don't think Ryan had. He added this story. Goblin mode is becoming part of people's everyday vocabulary. Language and meme experts share why. What, what is, okay. It's Ex memeable. Ex That's why. Explain goblin mode. Uh, goblin mode is like you're going into like a feral, uncontrolled, like <laughs> slob kind of mode. Like so the like, Star Trek rant. Kind of. Well, no, because that's, that's just like, that was just passionate nerddom, but like... Goblin mode would be like, okay, it's the weekend. I'm not t getting out of my pajamas. I'm melding my disgusting, fleshy body into the couch, and I'm watching <laughs> Netflix for 24 hours. That's goblin mode. Uh, yeah. Well, we all need something after the last couple of years because day bleeds into night. Everybody's sleep schedule's messed, messed up. up. Nobody oh, knows so what day up. of the week it is. It's like, <laughs> I get panicked emails about work on a Saturday, and it's like, today's Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you're okay, dude. Uh, and it's like, oh, right, yeah, I don't have to worry about this until Monday, thanks. And it's just like, okay, <sighs> I guess. Why is it like this? So, yeah, full-on goblin mode. This started out as a typo, apparently. I, I've heard the term goblin for a while, where, like, some people refer to it as, like, goblin core, where... You're also not aside from being a slob. You're also like super interested in like leaves and moss and like being outside and like being a literal goblin. But I kind of like the idea of it also being a synonym for a slob. I've certainly, you know, with the uh, with the global situations, what they are. I've I've certainly let the uh, the maintenance at the office go. Things are <laughs> things are a little goblin mode at the goblin office. Goblin mode, yeah. It's like, oh, look, there's just a pile of computers over here in the floor. That's great. Yeah, yeah I was right. I was cleaning out our entryway the other day at our house, and I was like, I have sandals here that I haven't worn for months because it's cold still. <laughs> but I just left them sitting there. Cause, well, it's almost warm again. <laughs> yeah, now I can just use them. I don't even need to move them. <laughs> a little bit goblin mode is just not even changing your clock for daylight savings time. Oh, yeah, I've done that in a few places. <laughs> it like drives my husband crazy because he'll change it everywhere in the house. But then if he gets in, like, my car, he's like, why is your clock still wrong? It's been three months. So I'm like, eh, it's fine. I know what time. I just mentally adjust for that. Engagement challenge. What's your goblin mode? Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Right, we will, we'll see you next week. Next week. Bye.